Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, we are going to be highlighting the newest card out into Marvel Snap, and that is War Machine. And I wanted to get a video out to you quickly, given a deck overview and breakdown of the card, and get a list out there that may be a little different than what you're seeing in some of the standard War Machine lists. And obviously, pretty much you only really need the War Machine Infinite combo to like get a consistent, insane power play out on turn six. And I don't necessarily think that that's going to be the only really strong stylistic War Machine list at this point, but he is kind of an interesting card, so I do think there needs to be a lot of gameplay before we're probably going to see what the best deck is out there for him. So I would keep an eye on the channel and see if I upload anything else further along in this week with a War Machine based list, and I think there's going to be some pretty strong archetypes that he's going to format and potentially even create new ones with that being said the lottery machine list is a deck list that can really high roll and really blow your opponent away potentially based on how you draw uh obviously it is kind of rng based a little bit so there are going to be some games where you're not going to be able to compete with some people and you're going to lose the game but if you can identify early whether or not it's going to be a strong game for you based on your draw, you can snap earlier and still win some cubes with this deck pretty easily. And what you want to do with this list is really dependent on you, and you can kind of meld it into your own concept. Uh, you can go more lottery style and include Lockjaw and Psylocke in the list, or you could really go more discard heavy and try to be more focused and throw hella in this list, honestly. War Machine is going to fit and be strong and almost all archetypes he's more of a counter card than a proactive card and with that being said we're going to get into the must-haves and then the flex cards of this deck list and then we'll follow up with some high level infinite gameplay breakdown for you guys and our first must-have is black knight and while we're talking about him i'm going to go over the other cards in the discard package as well which are going to be lady sif and ghost rider that fall into the must-have category and the reason I have these cards into the must-have of the lottery machine list is the fact that one if you are playing a lockjaw style list you have lower cost tokens that are easily triggered by your lockjaw and two there is a lot of cards that you're playing in this list that are gigantic and if you discard them with targeted discard with your blade or your lady sif in this situation you're gonna be able to bring them back relatively easily and you're gonna have a very strong ebony blade for four energy which would likely is gonna only cost three energy because you'll also be playing zabu and building off of that zabu is a must-have in this list there's just so many good four drops that you can include in this list so it just makes sense to have zabu in there let them get down to three energy and you can really do some fantastic plays later in the game earlier in the game mobius has decreased a little bit in his level of play so you're going to more consistently not get countered and moving on we have the man himself as a must-have in this list more machine he is the four six and he essentially makes every single card in your deck jeff the next turn and it doesn't matter the location doesn't matter the text it's a very very strong effect obviously I've found him to be more powerful and more consistent coming out on turn five rather than turn four. Most of the time that gives you the infinite plays on turn six, but he works really well with a lot of other things in this deck. Like for example, your Cole Obsidian, if you didn't have one of your one drops out, you can still get him out. Your Giganto, if you're playing him, can get out into any location, you can throw stuff into lanes that have goose on them that your big cards wouldn't normally be able to get into in this list you can throw them into professor x lanes war machine is extremely strong and is going to be a hard counter to a lot of lockdown control decks that have been frustrating in the past and i have cole obsidian as a must have in this list because of the sheer value he has at the four energy 10 power slot uh you have enough one costs in this list for him to be able to kind of consistently get out pretty easily earlier if you need to and he obviously he's another target for zabu and as i was saying before in the war machine aspect if you're needing some later game plays and your hand's not as great 
you can still get him out with your war machine and throw him anywhere so he's very strong card in that aspect i also like to have scar in a lot of my lists and Colipsidian is obviously a trigger for him as well to get his cost reduction going potentially earlier in the game. And finally in the must-haves, I'm going to lump together the two largest cards in the list, which are going to be Giganto and the Infinite. And they are must-haves because they are great targets to be discarded and make your Ebony Blade have potential huge value and be great to be pulled back by your Ghost Rider. Uh, they both work extremely well with War Machine as well, as I was saying. They can be played anywhere uh, giganto doesn't get limited to the left lane anymore the infinite you don't have to do anything you don't have to just skip your turn five to play him on turn six anymore works out extremely well and the 20 power on turn six is a strong play no matter what but you got to make sure you have strategically filled up your other lands beforehand and moving on to the flex cards as i was saying earlier there is a ton you can do with war machine and in this lottery type list you can kind of throw in the larger cards that you want and make it suit your needs in your own way. Uh, personally, I have Blade as a flex card because he's another one drop that can be a token if you need him to be. And if you're not drawing your Lady Sif to get a very well-targeted discard of your six drops in your hands, he's another discard that you could have potentially if you need it to trigger your Ebony blade getting into action or your ghost rider and i have ebony maw as a flex card in this list because he has the sheer stat line value that there is no other comparison in the one drop family a one seven is incredible and you can now play him without really as much fear before turn three is over and knowing that you have war machine you're still going to be able to play stuff on that lane potentially later and him only being one energy, you can also combo him well later in the game if you didn't get a chance to play him and have War Machine out and play Ebony, Ebony Maw and something else in a later turn, which is going to be extremely strong as well. And I have Psylocke as a flex card if you are going to be playing the Lockjaw variation of this list because you need another way besides Zabu to get your Lockjaw out by turn three really to make him effective and useful in this list and it doesn't hurt that the Psylocke could also help you get out your Jubilee early which can help snowball your lottery style deck list into getting all these big cards out really early and blowing your opponent away in terms of sheer value. And Jubilee and Lockjaw kind of meld together here as a flex option. They're really kind of the main lottery style of this deck list besides the discard aspect of lottery in the list and they really help ramp out your board early and there's not a ton of bad hits you're going to get when you play into your Lockjaw or you play your Jubilee. So you're going to get a lot of value most of the time out of them and they work pretty well most of the time and especially there are more Zabu targets that are going to be three costs so you can do some unexpected combos later in the game that your opponent might not necessarily be prepared for. And Shang-Chi's perennial flex card that's out there he's great in this list because you're running zabu get his cost reduction obviously and he's easily played earlier in the games now there's a lot of cards that are out there with 10 plus power early and you're gonna catch your opponent slacking a lot of the time and be able to kill stuff and swing the board very easily as shang chi and finally there's a bunch of six costs that are very big in the game so you can kind of throw in what you want to cater your list to be. Magneto is another gigantic card that's a good flex option and his on reveal is obviously very powerful and it can impact the opponent's side of the board and really screw them up. So he's a great option in your lists. Uh, you could play Death if you really wanted to and she's a more consistent, always gonna be discarded by your Lady Sif if you wanted to. And then I like to play personally Scar a lot in this list because you're cheating out a lot of these high powered cards out very quickly into the game and a lot of the times your scar is going to easily get down to two energy and you're going to be able to play him for uh, very cheap so guys that was a quick overview of the lottery machine deck list and what you can really do with it it's a pretty flexible deck it's, it's a pretty fun deck obviously there's going to be a ton of deck lists coming out with uh, war machine in mind throughout the week so make sure you keep an eye on the channel there could be something extremely strong coming out soon and at this point, I want to remind everybody, there's still over 90% of you that are 
watching this channel that are not subscribed. So if you could hit that button, like the video, it would help me out a ton. But with that being said, let us get into some of the high level infinite gameplay. And first up here, we have Lily Saurus. It's nice having War Machine in your opening hand, just kind of knowing you have all those options. Blade here is a good draw off onto the Infinaut, too. Nebula onto Savage Lion. It's fine. That actually worked out well for us on that Crimson's Cosmos. Giganto, it's a pretty dead hand. Vault, Lady Sif. Okay, um, there's Lady Sif here into the vault. And I think it's Get a Cole Obsidian down play here. It's either that or Ghost Rider. I think it's Cole Obsidian here. Now we have options. We can just win and not have to worry about War Machine here. So it's going to be a Ghost Rider into the vault. No. Yeah. It's going to get the Scar cost down to a 2. So then it can't be played in Crimson Cosmos. But that's not really the end of the world. Brings back Giganto. And his Jeff is just not big enough. Play Scar into Savage Land. We lose to uh, Shang-Chi pretty much. But he does not have a Shang-Chi, so that is a victory. And next up is Joe Green. Black Knight and Lady Sif in the opening hand is good. District Dex, not so good. Let's see what we're doing here. Crystal. Uh... Okay, just play Zabu on the Metropolis here. Well, that's not terrible, honestly. Lady Sif, get rid of the death, and now I get the Ebony Blade onto the Death's Domain, and it cannot be destroyed. It's a pretty strong play. All right, Werewolf is a fine play. He can now bounce him for and compete. Oh, and he's out of there. And next up we have Unattended Toddler. And Zabu in the opening hand is always good. Dream Dimension, not as good. Kylan, not terrible. Uh, War Machine is also not bad to have, obviously.
Rickety Bridge is a is a tough location. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and throw Lady Sif down here. Yeah, magic makes this even even trickier for us. Bring back Infinite now. Let us see what we got. Ebony Ma is not terrible. Machine on Rickety Bridge just to have something there. It makes it Pretty tough with that Shang-Chi coming down that early. Uh, almost makes it impossible to play Ebony Ma now at this point. But I would like to get him out if I could. The Jubilee doesn't have enough good hits for me to consider playing it, so I'm gonna just play Giganto into the limbo. Scar. And Jubilee. Hope to hit Cole Obsidian. I don't really have a ton of great options here. And he infinites and steals it. And Ebony Maws. And I'm going to get the victory for the greater margin of power difference. We'll take that. And next up is Sockeye. Imagine he's a fan of Salmon. Monster Island's good if we draw into our Scar early. Just gonna go ahead and get the Black Knight down here. Aunt May is fine. I'd rather it not hit. It's the Monster Island, but I'm going to get it triggered now. And it's not the end of the world that it went there. And Akrosha is also a fine location. We're just going to end up throwing Jubilee here onto uh, main location so I don't get the negative one power from the Karosha. Blade is not, not bad at all there, honestly. Play here is probably just throwing the Emony Blade down into Necrotia and going from there. He's got a Ravona base list. Scar is a great draw, actually. I think the play here is a War Machine and a Scar. So I think we're going to go ahead Scar Middle and War Machine onto Necrotia. He 
This Jubilee hits a War Machine. He's got an Iron Man. And he's out of there. It's another victory. And next up we have Bulbman Drip. Danger Room is fine. Um, Blade is good to have in hand. Zabu. Yeah. Play Zabu on the unknown location so I can really load up the Nexus potentially if I need to. And here I'm fine throwing out a Lady Sif. It's going to hit one of two targets that I don't. Both are good. Now that's an interesting. I need to worry about Galactus here. Um, I don't think I can play worrying about Galactus, honestly. If I get Galactus, we get Galactus. Nexus is fine. Jubilee is terrible. So we do need we need to get War Machine out here so we can infinite. And try to get lucky, I suppose. Let's see what he's going for. He's enchantressing away. course of action we'll see what uh see what happens here really was a bad draw rocket silk black swan that's not going to be enough power to compete with the infinite It's another victory. And next up we have MVP Havoc. We're gonna have a potentially clunky opening hand here. Blade is fine with the Ghost Rider. Hopefully we draw one of our big cards here. And we do, so that's good. And I'll get the Blade onto the Muir Island, start stacking it up. I'm really not worried about the Nebula. It should not get strong enough that I won't be able to take that location later. Hmm. An interesting turn here now. I think I'm going to... I think I'll play Ebony Maw here on Tomuir Island. I think that's fine, honestly. That's fine. I'm gonna set up our Giganto Ghost Rider onto Hellas right now. Get our Scar cheapened out for us. That's still fine. Uh, let's see what we got here. Coal Obsidian, huh? Okay. We have a few good cards in the deck, but uh, not sure any of them are worth it over playing Scar Middle here. Not play Lottery Machine here on Jubilee. I'd rather have a consistent value play here. And shonging away the Giganto is not 
the end of the world. Now it's a little trickier here for us. We can't play anything easily. We can hit a War Machine or Lady Sif are two big hits. And a War Machine would get us to 12 power only to tie the game. And I gotta imagine he's easily gonna win the left lane here. So we're probably running away. Next up is Quen Guard, Gardo, Garo, Black Knight, Zabu, Lady Sif, Scar, opening hand is pretty strong. Go ahead and get Black Knight down. And we're going to go ahead and go, oh, Geoenheim is fine. Makes him awkward to play right now though. We'll just play Zabu now on Titan. He's still passing. Cloning Vats. Honestly, all Cloning Vat uh, War Machine here. Maybe able to do Ebony Maw plays. Nakia on turn three is his first play. Very interesting. And we'll go ahead and do a Ebony Maw War Machine on the Cloning Vats. Zori man's his Nakia, okay. Giganto, Infinite. I think the play here is probably just getting an infinite down. 20 power is 20 power. It's gonna get our scar power reduction as well. And I'm not gonna be able to play the Ebony Maw because I'm not war machining, but I have quite a few plays I can do otherwise. Around Scar, Lady Sif. Uh, Ultron doesn't win him the game. Brood doesn't win him. Yeah, he's out of there. So, guys, that was some gameplay of the Lottery Machine deck. Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I think War Machine is going to be extremely strong. But I don't necessarily think it's going to be easy to find his best archetype or his best build. It's going to take a lot of playing around probably to really get a good feel for him and what he truly excels at. I don't necessarily think he's the best card ever to come out, but he's certainly very strong. But that being said, I'll see you guys on the next one.